Moving on to chapter 9.2, notes on series and convergence. Uh, so we're going to look to understand the definition of convergent infinite series, um, look to understand properties of infinite geometric series, as well as the nth term test for divergence of an infinite series. Now, we talked about convergent and divergent sequences. Um, so uh, one thing to, um, to make students aware is that it's one thing to see whether terms of a sequence converges or diverges, right? And we simply look at the limit um, as n approaches infinity uh, for many of the sequences to determine convergence. Um, however, it is quite another thing entirely to see if the sum of um, the terms of a, a series converge or not. So uh, looking to see whether the terms of a sequence converge is different than looking to see whether uh, the sum of the series converge. So uh, I just want to make that um, uh, distinct uh, up front as we begin to look at um, uh, the difference between those two things. Uh, one important application of infinite sequence is in representing infinite summations. So if a sub n is an infinite series or sequence, then the summation of a sub n, which is simply um, notation for adding up a, a, a sequence of values, you, with plus signs in between, so a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 all the way to a sub n. Uh, we consider this an infinite series or a summation, simply the sum of the terms in a sequence. Okay, the numbers a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3 are the terms of the series. Unlike sequence, which always starts at 1, um, sometimes it is convenient uh, to begin the index at n equals 0 or some other integer. To find the sum of an infinite series, we're going to first consider um, the following sequence of partial sums. So um, many times we're not able to find the sum of an infinite series, um, but we're able to um, look at the pattern of the sums uh, just by looking at um, partial sums, where uh, we look at the first three terms added together, or the first four terms added together, or the first five terms added together, and see if we can um, make some uh, observations and conclusions about the series just based on these partial sums. So um, S sub 1, so the sum of the first term is simply uh, the first se sequence value. Uh, the sum of the first two terms is simply A sub 1 plus A sub 2. Sum of the first uh, three terms, the partial sum, S sub 3, is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3. And then a, S sub n, however many terms we want in the, in the partial sum, uh, we just add uh, those number of terms from a sub 1 all the way to a sub n. Okay, so again, S sub n is the nth partial sum. Okay. Uh, if this sequence of partial sums converge, then the series is said to converge as well. So if we can determine that um, just by um, a limited amount of information from uh, the series or the sum, if that is enough to tell us, um, if that part converges, then we know that overall the series must and will converge as well. Okay, definition of convergent and divergent series for the infinite series. Uh, the summation of a sub n, the nth partial sum is given by s sub n is equal to a sub 1 all the way to a sub n added together. If the sequence of partial sums, meaning s sub 1, s sub 2, s sub 3, s sub 4, and we compare um, the values of all these sequences, if the sequence of these sums converge to s, then the series of uh, summation of a sub n also converges. Uh, the limit s is called the sum of the series. Uh, if s sub n, if the sum, if the series diverges, then our, um, if, the, uh, if the sequence of the partial sums diverges, then our series will diverge as well. Okay. And for these examples here, we're going to write a few um, partial sums and determine if the series uh, converges or diverges. Okay, so starting with um, the first example here, 
uh, the summation of 1 over 2 to the n. If we list out uh, the first few values, uh, we get 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth. And we're going to create, um, write a few partial sums. So s sub 1 is simply just the first term, 1 half. S sub 2 is the sum of the first two, se uh, two sequence values, which is 1 half plus 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths. And S sub 3 are the three first three sequence values added together, 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, which is 7 eighths. And we can see that uh, the sum is initially 1 half, then the sum becomes 3 fourths, then the sum becomes 7 eighths. And if we keep going, this is kind of enough to see that this sum uh, will converge towards 1 because um, we see the difference between these values keep decreasing. Um, so uh, uh, these values are decreasing fast enough to allow uh, the sum to level out or to, um, to converge at a value, most likely 1. So we can say that this is a convergent series. Okay, the second here, uh, the summation of 1 is simply 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, so on and so forth. And we can see that this series will diverge simply by looking at the first few partial sums. So the sum of the first, uh, the first um, um, s sub 1 will just be 1. s sub 2 is simply the first two terms added together, 1 plus 1. And we see that s sub 3 is simply the first three terms added together. So 1 goes to 2, then goes to 3. Now, we see that the sequence of this partial sum uh, is not decreasing or uh, is not leveling out. And, um, and we also can see that uh, the sequence values are not decreasing. Uh, so uh, this series will get infinitely large. So we can say this is a divergent series. Okay, next one here. The summation of 1 over n. Um, s sub 1 is 1, s sub 2 is 1 plus 1 half, s sub 3 is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third, and so on and so forth. Now, if we compare these values here, we get 1 followed by 1.5, followed by 1.83, followed by 2.08. Uh, we see that these values are getting smaller and smaller, but are these values getting smaller, are, are these values getting um, small fast enough? to allow for these sums to eventually converge. Um, so this sum is growing, but is the sum going to taper off towards a specific value, or is it, will it go uh, become infinitely large? And in our calculator, um, we can um, plug in uh, the sum. Um, uh, if we go to math, uh, we can find um, this um, um, the sum feature. Um, that we want if we do we can do the sum of the sequence of uh, one of one over x from one to the 999th uh, term and if we add all those terms together we see that um, the s of 3 s of 4 is 2.08 but then s sub um, 999 is 7.484 so even though uh, these values are getting smaller uh, it is not getting small enough to allow for this series or the sum to converge. And so um, just by looking at um, uh, these be uh, the behavior of these partial sums, we can conclude that this sum um, will diverge to infinity. Um, it is not, um, uh, the values are not getting small fast enough to allow for the series to converge. So therefore, sum will diverge. Hey, next example here. Um, the summation of 1 over n squared, um, this, the, um, the partial sum, uh, s sub 1 gives us 1, um, s sub 2 will give us 1 plus 1 fourth, s sub 3 gives us 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 ninth, and if we go through the same um, plugging in um, and looking for the sum of the first 999 partial sums, we see that this gives us 1.6. And, and so this is decreasing at a fast enough rate where, um, or the terms are decreasing at a fast enough rate to allow for the sum to converge. 
and most likely it'll probably be around 1.6 um, um, even if we were to increase uh, the partial sum uh, to 2,000 or 3,000. So we can see that uh, the sum is going to converge okay and um, notice that both 1 over n the limit of both these um, uh, values are going to go to 0 However, this 1 over n is, has a sum that diverges, but 1 over n squared is a sum that converges. And so we're going to explore that a little bit further and um, talk about um, um, so we can get a better idea as to why this 1 over n um, creates a series that creates a sum that diverges, but 1 over n squared creates a sum that converges. Okay. Next topic is um, telescoping series. So series that look like this, 1 minus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 third plus 1 third minus 1 fourth. This is called a telescoping series because the series collapses on itself um, to just one term or just a few terms. We see that many of these terms are going to cancel each other out um, over time. So the negative 1 half will cancel out with 1 half. Negative 1 third will cancel out with positive 1 third so on and so forth. So if you can imagine uh, the canceling will continue to infinity but the one term that will not cancel out is simply uh, this first term one. Okay. Now it may it may be more than just one term it may not be just it, um, it may not be the first term um, but um, if we write out enough of these terms for the series for these telescoping series we should be able to cancel out and see um, uh, which ones will be um, uh, will be remaining? All right. So the way that these um, series are set up, these ratios differ by only a couple of values. We're going to see this on the next um, example, so that it will generate the same values but with different signs. Where down the line in the series uh, they will cancel out. Okay, so we'll explore this um, um, as we finish up notes for nine point two.